Hi, my name is Justin Hunter. I'll be talking about how to think about identifying test inputs to be used in software tests. I won't be talking about anything deep and profound. I will be talking about practical advice that has applicability in pairwise testing and combinatorial testing in particular. Why is this a useful topic? Two reasons, really. The first is when people first get started in combinatorial and pairwise testing, in my experience, the area that they struggle with the most is trying to identify the appropriate test inputs to use. Secondly, unless you do a really thorough and thoughtful job of identifying your test inputs, you're going to head straight into a big garbage in, garbage out problem. We'll look at two different software applications and identify test inputs for each of those. As we do that, we'll do it with two different approaches. The first approach will be very quick and dirty, no more than three values per parameter. The second approach will be more detailed. It's going to allow us to hit business rules and requirements with more specificity, but it's going to result in a larger number of tests being created. We'll talk about a couple different specific examples of identifying test inputs to be included in test plans. As we do that, keep in mind that this is highly context specific. What's going to be appropriate for one scenario would be inappropriate for another. There are a couple pros and cons of two different approaches that you see here, for example. Let's dive right into it then. First with a quick home insurance application seven simple questions. Each of those seven questions will translate into a parameter. Postcode could be as simple as valid and valid blank. The others, different variations of small, small, medium, and large. For those parameters that have drop-down menus, the values almost leap off the page at us. We have different age ranges there. We only want three values, so we're going to simplify that and group some together, 18 to 34 as the first value, and so on. So now, real quickly, let's take a look at what those test inputs would look like within Hexawise. You would identify the parameters and values as we've done here. Once you're comfortable with those, and I'll increase the size of this and adjust it so you can see these test inputs. Once you're comfortable with those test inputs, you'd click on Create Tests and create a set of pairwise tests. So here we see uh, almost 2,000 total possible tests. We only need 16 to achieve a coverage goal of pairwise testing. As highlighted before, the age ranges and number of bedroom ranges are translated into specific numbers and the specific drop-down menu items appear in security. If we wanted a more thorough coverage, of course, we could just select three-way and move to coverage of not every single pair of values now, but every single possible triplet of values would now be covered in this, these 55 tests. Here's another kind of similar application. A user over the internet would indicate their answers to these questions and click on next step and get a quote. On the left hand side we see some pretty straightforward and I think relatively easy test inputs to identify. Gender could be male, could be female. You might also want to consider a third value of no selection made. Smoke, yes, no. Student, yes, no. Those ones are easy. Where it gets interesting is when we look at these questions on the right hand side height, weight, birth date. I think they're interesting because it starts to make us question what are we really trying to test here? And if you know, you know a little bit about how health insurance ratings engines work, what we're really interested in in height and weight if we're trying to test the accuracy of this mini ratings engine, is what is the body mass index of the applicant? So in that instance, we would try to conflate those. We want to combine those two concepts into one and consider test inputs that would lead us to 
high, medium, and low body mass index outputs. Similarly, birth date, what's really under the covers there, what we're really trying to test is what is the age of the applicant, because that's going to lead to different business rules and different outcomes being tested. So with this example, I just wanted to highlight that when you're looking at different possible sets of test inputs for your plans, sometimes, as on the left, it's going to be really straightforward and easy. They'll jump off the screen at you and into your test plan. Other times, as on the right, you need to dig a little further and ask what's really going on. I know we've just started to scratch the surface of this important topic. I'd point out as well that you can get additional examples within the Hexwise tool itself. So there'll be explanatory notes, you'll have multiple sample plans, and you can get a sense of how the same test design principles and test input identification principles uh, are put to use with links to articles and uh, other examples of how test inputs have been identified in, um, in many different examples from the very simple one you see there uh, involving a flight reservation to uh, extremely complex examples with uh, many, many, many different uh, parameters uh, in the case of this Google this Google Maps get directions functionality test. Uh, that's a particularly interesting one in my view. You have uh, 31 tests out of out of a possible almost 40 trillion tests uh, and you can get a sense for um, what different approaches are have been taken in a lot of different uh, examples. Thank you again for your time. I'd close with a reminder that if you are interested in exploring pairwise and combinatorial test design methods in more detail, we do make our powerful Hexawise test design tool available for free to teams of up to five testers. Uh, and we've tried to make the tool as easy to use as possible and included test design instruction inside the tool itself. Having said that, if you do have any questions about test design and or how to use the tool, please feel free to leave comments or questions in, in the comments section below and uh, we'll be happy to address those in future videos. Thank you.